Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Well, I'm out here this morning with the brand new iFlight Nazca Levoque F6 V2. Look at this thing, it's huge in size. And you're probably saying, well, that doesn't look huge, but this is the previous model. Remember this one? I reviewed this one before with the little green props. Uh, it's a pretty small frame compared to the new model that's out. This is the biggest Nazca frame that iFlight has made. And I gotta say, I love this thing. And you're probably watching this video right now at the end of November or sometime later in the year 2022 or maybe even 2023. But this video is being recorded on this date. Check below. I'm sure by the end of November, I probably have snow in my area. So I received this drone early and it does have the DJI 03 air unit in it and it's phenomenal. But as of the making of this video, I can't tell you about it because DJI hasn't released it. By the time you're watching this video, DJI has long released the air unit and the world knows about it. So I'm not going to get into the air unit, but I'm going to tell you this. I put a camera on top. I put a DJI Action 2 camera on top of this drone, flew it around, and I was expecting the difference between the Action 2 to be much better than the air unit. But I'm going to tell you the air unit outshines the DJI Action 2. As a matter of fact, let me show you some comparison video of the two cameras flying this thing. Check this out. Here we have the DJI Action 2 camera set to ultra wide angle at 4K and check this out. This is the new O3 unit. You can't tell a difference. Maybe the O3 is a little wider, but for smoothness, they're about the same. So you can save yourself an awful lot of hundreds of dollars by not buying an action camera and just using the DJI O3 air unit. It is so silky smooth, but you might get the props in the frame if you go ultra wide, like you could see right there for a second. You'll only get the props in the frame if you start moving the drone from side to side because the entire sensor is being used and the image is actually being moved around the entire sensor. But if you leave the camera settings on 4K 60 frames per second, ultra wide with rock steady and you fly in a forward direction or do freestyle, then you're not going to get the props in the frame. So you'll notice if you look at the bottom of the unit I have, this is called a dead cat design. Dead cat design means that the forward arms go almost straight out. That's to keep the props out of the frame. And it's a good thing too, because a lot of times I've been flying this and I will use the DJI camera up front here and I will put it on super ultra wide view. And it's so wide that it catches the tips of the props every now and then due to the rock steady stability that's in here. So it's a good thing that the dead cat design exists because if I would have got the other design, which is the X, it's a squished X. That's usually my preference. You'd have the props in the frame with this camera. So if you're buying this and you're never going to put a camera on top, make sure you get the dead cat design. And speaking of recording video, there is a spot to put a micro SD card in this unit and record 4K video. And like I said, the video looks awesome. Now, since this Nazgul Evoque is a newer version of the previous release one many months ago, um, you know, they've updated a lot of things in it. And one of the cool things they updated was just like this one had a spot in the back to plug your battery in. This one has it as well. If you plug a battery by the way this is a 6s drone and this is a 6s battery when you plug a 6s battery there's so much voltage in it when you plug it into a drone you get a pop sound but watch this i'm going to plug it in and it's going to be as quiet as can be see that nothing it just turns on but you didn't hear a pop ahead of time that is so cool oh and i since i had it plugged in let me just show you it also lights up let's see if you can see it out in the daylight here so I'll probably show you a better example of the lighting up, but there it is along the sides. You can see it's all green, it lights up, and on the bottom. This is in bright sunlight. Like the sun is right there shooting right at my face. And I don't know if you can see it. This lights up, this lights up. Uh, this lights up, lights up, lights up, lights up, and the iFlight logo. It's really cool. At night, it looks very alien-wise. So if you like to fly at night, it'll probably look pretty good. I'm probably showing you some video right now of what it looks like indoors with the lights lit on, and it's, it's pretty cool. Motors on here are high efficiency, and they're made out of precision metal. They're one of the top motors you can possibly buy for an FPV drone, which is amazing. They are 1500 kV since mine is 6S. And since it's all modern technology, it's got an F7 flight controller, 55 amp PSC. And since it's got the DJI communication system and camera, it says you can go like 10 kilometers out, but honestly, you can't go 10 kilometers because the batteries you put on drones will never get you 10 kilometers. You'll run out of power before you actually get to the end of the range. But it's nice to know it, it can be done. And having the DJI O3 Air 
unit in this drone and probably all future quads on the market, well, guess what? There's some incompatibility issues with older products. In other words, I used to love to fly with this and go plug and play with the air unit. Doesn't work with the O3, but this one does. So with all that said, I'm gonna take it right here for a little hover test just to show you how it hovers and what it looks like as the sun is rising and then we'll go for a flight. All right, I got a little Mini 3 Pro over there going around me. The sun is up there, so it might get blinded and crash into stuff. Let's hope it doesn't. So this guy's ready to go. I have this all set up in beta flight, so I have it that if I press this, those motors will start. Watch this. Start and stop. And there we go. Nice. And I also programmed this switch over here in beta flight. So when it says N, that's angle mode. When it says sport mode, it's horizon mode. And when it says M for manual, that's acro mode. And over on this side, I put the beeper, the finder beeper in. So I think if I push it down, it's gonna beep. There we go. That's to find it if I lose it and turn it off. So I'm gonna put this in angle mode just for hovering it here. And come on, DJI Mini, I'm gonna to walk towards you. And you should go back a little bit. I don't wanna to stand too close to this drone because when it goes up, it is super powerful. This is a 6S drone with six inch props that could shred me into a million pieces. So I'm gonna respect it and just stand back a little bit. You ready for this Mini 3? I'll wait till you come around and I'll fly it up. Now, as you're coming around, I will mention this controller is not the best for FPV flying in the real FPV world. It's very, very finicky. Power on, going up. So if you're a beginner or something, you might have problems. See how I'm shaking it around, jiggling it? That's because these joysticks are not 100% accurate on this controller. But you could still get away with having a really good time using this tiny little controller. It just takes a little bit more practice to fly a real FPV drone. The controller is more made for the DJI FPV drone and the Avada, which is a lot more forgiving than a real FPV drone. But I'm doing it here. I'm hovering it, keeping it right in place. So if I can do it, I'm sure a lot of you guys could do it just with a little bit of practice. So this is what it sounds like, and uh, this is how it flies. I think it's tuned beautifully, to be quite honest. I've flown it a few times already, and the tuning on it is really good. I'll just put it down. Hit my little arm motor, or I should say my arm button, and it disarms the motors, and uh, there we go. Now I'm gonna take it for, where are you? Now I'm gonna take it for, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna chase this drone. We're gonna go for a flight now with this little baby. I'm holding the controller so I can see what this sees. And I should mention that I've flown this twice already and I get about five minutes on a 1300 milliamp hour 6S light bulb battery. That, that's my time, five minutes. Now iFlight says you can get eight minutes flight time out of this if you put, you know, a larger battery. But for my flying style, I like the 1300, maybe 1400 milliamp hour lipo batteries and the way i fly um yeah i seem to get five minutes your flight time may differ all right let's go fly it i don't know if this camera picks it up nice glowy lights everywhere she's all set on a beautiful sunny day and i've got the camera up front set to an angle of i think it's about 30 degrees if i eyeball it 35 degrees it's where i like it for flying in uh, acro mode okay we're all set to fly I've taken this for several flights, so I know what to expect. So uh, let's put it in acro mode. Tap the button once to fire up the motors. And here we go. And let's bring it down low so we can fly through stuff. This is super powerful, this drone. There you go, right through the trees. It's such a beautiful drone to fly. It is so well tuned. I know in the year 2022, we all called these drones. In the days when I started flying FPV, we all called them quads. I have like next to no throttle on this. Uh, it's just cruising. This is cruise mode for me. It's a beautiful flyer. And if you want to do freestyle, uh, I will say it's one of the best freestyle drones around. Beautiful freestyle on it in any configuration, however you want to fly, whatever you want to do. It, uh, it does it all and it does the flips and the rolls so smoothly. Like there's no panic or anything. It's, it's tuned so well that uh, you have no issues. Now take a look where I am. I'm over here. I just want to show you this is really good with the DJI O3 system. Uh, here's what I've noticed. One is that you can fly really far away and go behind objects and it won't complain. So I'm taking it very relaxing here. I've got throttle now at about half throttle, but I'm flying quite a distance away. Uh, that's the first thing I've noticed with this O3 system. The second thing I notice is, it, is that it complains about your SD cards. I get an error every now and then that says, your SD card is much too slow. So I've gone all the way to one end, of, from one end of the park to the other. There's the guys, they normally fly planes out here. Somebody's flying a plane down there. And uh, I'm far away in another field, but you see I can, come over here and uh, chase their planes. No problem, that's just a little plate. And uh, yeah, there's 
three guys down there. I'll come buzz them a little bit. There we go. And we'll head back to where I am. It's a very, very nice flying drone. Uh, anybody who gets this is going to be extremely, probably massively happy with it because it just flies so smooth. There's no issues whatsoever with anything. I, I haven't found any problems with the drone itself. The only thing is, like I said, is the DJI 03 system. It's new, so I'm using a beta software because it hasn't been released yet. And that's probably why I'm getting those errors where it says, hey, your SD card is too slow. But I'll tell you, for transmission distance, wow, it is so good. And the information that comes back into your goggles, the clarity, really, really good. And the great thing, like all really good drones, if you want to fly slow, you can fly slow like I'm doing here. I'm coming up to some place where the landing pad is. There it is. Boink! And then land it. Hopefully this camera is working. One of the questions I always get asked when I review drones is, how fast does it go? Put what iFlight says the speed is below. For a drone to go really fast, it really has to tilt. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this camera, push it up a little higher than I normally have it. So now I've got this camera looking way up. It's looking at the sky. I'm going to assume that's going to give me high speed. I put a GPS on the top to see what the speed is and we'll go from there and we'll see what it does. Here we go. Tap the motors. Fly. You can see how much I'm tilted up and there we go. Hear it scream? It's just draining the heck out of the battery. Whipping it around. And let's scream it and a s Oh, 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 I killed the battery, killed the battery, coming down, coming down. Whoa, that just crashed out of the sky. Hang on a sec, see if I could start it. Motor starting. Oh, -hoo. so it's recording still. It survived that, but I think I just killed the battery. I blew something in it. So where am I? I'm over here by those trees. All right, I'm going to land it just in case I lost my uh, GPS when it crashed. Okay, on a mission to go find it. I've got the controller and the goggles just in case I can't remember where it is. So once again, the reason I'm walking to it by flying it back is just in case the GPS fell off. There's the trees right there. And there's the quad. It fell out of the sky from way up there all the way down here because something went wrong with that battery. What type of battery did I use? Oh, look at the battery. There's the problem. Okay, yank this out and I can see the problem. There we go. See this battery? Look, it's swollen. So what happened was I used so much power. This thing was sucking all the power out of the battery at high speed that the battery's swollen. Not good. Look at it. Oh my God. And it's warm too. And taking a look at the drone here for damage. Look at this. You know, when they said they built this thing super strong, well, that fell from way up there and look at it. Now, the amazing thing after that crash, the drone suffered utterly no damage. There's nothing wrong with it. You could fly again. Normally in a crash like that from falling from that height, the props are the first thing to go. They'll even bend or break right off. Nothing. Motors are still good. It still flies. So not a problem there. And as for my GPS, I looked and looked for about 20 minutes. I couldn't find it. So I'm going to say that's gone. And that's what happens if you put anything not secure on a drone or anything and it falls from the sky at super fast speed from a high height. As soon as it hits the ground, it comes to a zero stop. But uh, momentum continues. So whatever's on goes fling. And it could be like 200 feet away or 200 meters away even. So, so much for that. And as for why it did that, the problem was the battery, unfortunately. These are really good batteries. They have a huge C rating, like really huge. I think it's like 120 C. Yeah, I can see it right on 120 C. This is a good one. This is the one that crapped out on me right here. So the battery, I don't know if I can put them together. You can see one of them. This one here is all swollen now. Uh, so yeah, it didn't do very well. And when I checked the cells, there's six cells on here and one of the cells is like extremely low. The other cells are really good. They're at like about 3.7, 3.6, but one of the cells is below three. So it's toast. So what did I learn from that? This thing's really fast, really fast. And it really can suck a lot of power out of the battery. So make sure your batteries are brand new or really good if you're going to try that. If your batteries are kind of defective, it's a good chance you're going to fall out of the air like me. But more importantly, this thing is in perfect tip top condition after that fall. Not many drones could survive that. So really good. Steve here, Jedi Steve, is going to take the Nazgul Evoke V2 for a flight. But before he does, him and all everybody else who's in the video, I'll show you a picture of them. They were all here a second ago. Yeah. They all wondered why I was flying this thing with the D. Oh, here they all come back. <laughs> they go, okay. They were wondering why I was flying this drone uh, with this controller. This is a DJI controller for like the Avada or the DJI FPV drone. And this controller is a toy. It is not an RC hobby controller. However, 
DJI has made this controller available for people who get the new drones on the market with the DJI O3 Air unit in them, as this one has. So I have this bound to this. But in the future, I hope to get these drones with ELRS or Crossfire. I'll just show you this really quick, sorry, with your hands. You want to fly in acro mode, right? Correct. So I'm going to put it in acro mode all the way down. Okay. This is your start and stop button. Good, so good. Okay. hit it once, you're armed. Hit it again, unarmed. you're unarmed. Guarded. All the spectators. <laughs> and Steve over here. All right, Steve-o. Okay, hit, tap that button for arming. Yes. And uh, you're in acro mode. Already he's doing acro freestyle moves. All right, Steve, if you want to impart any comments yeah. as you're flying, go right ahead. Uh, just getting used to the sticks. They, they are very loose, lacks precision, but uh, I mean, it does the job, but would I rather fly like a TX-16? Yes, for sure, for precision. Here, buzz uh, it over us. I just want to, uh, with my microphone, to show how loud this thing is. It does have a screaming sound to it. Coming over Let's us, see. and I'm gonna put my mic, pointing my mic at it. Well, that's not too bad. It's hard to do fine adjustments, so again, it's a bit of a a thumbs down for the uh, the DJI controller as opposed to a, a full size Radio Master type uh, controller. How do you find it at uh, Freestyle? Oh, it's good. It's good. It's very responsive. Lots of power. Um, yeah, compare it to the average uh, average five inch uh, acro uh, quadcopter. It's very good. I feel the power. That's for sure. Yeah, no, it's enjoyable for sure. It's a nice quad. Very, very responsive. Very loose on the controller in the center. I mean, it's that's why I say it's very hard to do precise maneuvers, especially at low speed, because the center is so, so loose. That's the only way I can describe it. But otherwise, it, I mean, it's manageable, but it's not great. Next thing I want to show you is what comes in the box if you buy this drone. So uh, check this out. This is the box my drone came in, and these are the specifications of the drone I used in this video. Opening the box, we can see there's quite a bit inside. Now, although this is a professional FPV drone, iFlight has packaged it so that beginners can get off to a good start. For example, they've placed labels all over the FPV drone so that beginners can kind of get a good idea of what they're looking at. So if you are a beginner, please note that iFlight has placed the rubber nibs over some of the important ports. For example, this port here is so that you can update the firmware as well as activate your DJI O3 Air unit. And this port over here is so that you can update and configure the flight controller. Now iFlight has added their own heat sink to the DJI O3 Air unit so that this unit should not overheat. The forward facing DJI camera has a nice sensor in it and allows you to record at 4K 60 frames per second. Please also note that that camera is protected by a metal housing made out of aluminum and it works because when my drone fell out of the sky, no damage was had to the camera. You'll find dual antennas on the rear for maximum image transmission. Brushless motors are a powerful 1500 kV. There are no worries of getting dirt or debris or snow or ice or water in your flight controller because it's well protected all along the sides. The design of my FPV quad is a carbon fiber dead cat design. The Nazgul does come with an external camera mount, but you probably won't need it because the DJI camera is so darn good. The arms are made out of very thick carbon fiber, which means it would be very difficult to damage or break this drone. Items included in the box would be a set of props for your FPV quad and then a spare set as well as the prop nuts. You also receive a spare battery strap and two battery grips. To install a battery grip, just remove the backing and stick it to the top of your drone. Nut grips are also included for your antennas. Just pry them on the base of the nuts, screw on your antennas, and it looks like this when it's all done. Plenty of extra screws and nuts are provided. Additional receiver cables are also included, as well as plenty of documentation and stickers. Total takeoff weight of the drone is 515 grams. If I add the battery I used in this video, it comes up to 726 grams. And as I already mentioned previously, this drone certainly has a beautiful LED lighting system. 
Final thoughts on this drone? Really good. Really, really good. There's no way you could possibly be disappointed in any way, shape, or form getting this drone. The only negative about it is it's very expensive, and it's very expensive due to that DJI 03 air unit. That adds a lot of cost to the build of this drone. So this is like a Cadillac. This is a Cadillac FPV quad. If you're in the hobby and you've been buying quads and you want the best of the best, then you're probably gonna look at getting something like this. It's really good. So links to this product are below. Go check it out. So with all that said and the sun going out behind the cloud, I say thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any spare GPS units, send them all to me because I'm bound to crash or destroy or lose a pile more in the coming year of 2023. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. Catch you the next one. Bye.